Win a Pageant Episode 93. I know you dream of winning a pageant. You just need proper coaching. You're in the right place. Every Wednesday, I give you honest step-by-step training to take you to the top. Let's win a pageant. Hey, girl. Welcome to the Win a Pageant podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby. Now, when things get tough in pageantry or in life, sometimes we have a tendency to jump straight to the worst case scenario. We get totally overwhelmed and terrified by the worst possible thing that could possibly go wrong. And then we obsess over it until we can't possibly imagine any other way except the worst way possible. And we somehow end up pushed against the wall so much that we want to just turn our back on the whole situation and fly off the ledge into what we know is sure disaster and self-sabotage, but it almost seems better than this worst case scenario. (laughs) Have you ever been there? Clearly, I am speaking from experience. My first encounter with the ledge in pageantry was actually in my second pageant. The first pageant that I did, I I had like no chance of winning and I really didn't even want to win. So I was just really just doing it for fun. But my second pageant, this was a local preliminary title that would qualify me to compete at the state pageant in the Miss America system. It also happened to have a big chunk of scholarship dollars, and it was in front of my entire community in a grandstand that sat over 2,000 people. There were two weeks of rehearsals before the pageant day, and I just signed up because I just wanted to dance in front of a huge audience like this. The pageant had a talent, and I loved dance, and I thought this will be so much fun. I hadn't done this in my entire 20 years of life, danced in front of an audience this big. So I really wasn't in it to win it, but I just wanted to have fun and dance. So, you know, it didn't really matter. The first week of rehearsals was happening so wonderfully. It was so much fun. We learned the opening number dance. We practiced our talents. We learned the walking patterns. We did some mock interviews. The girls were all wonderful. We were having a blast. And then at the end of week one, I started thinking that I might actually be in the running for this title. I had a really great talent, and I was enjoying the interviews and the whole process. And But then, you know, the week ended, and that weekend I forgot about the whole thing. I was just practicing my dance over and over because that's really what it was all about for me. And then when Monday came back around for the second week of rehearsals, I started paying more attention, and I discovered that I was potentially in the top three of this pageant. And I was totally overwhelmed. I was terrified because I truly felt like I could not handle this pageant title. Like I was transferring schools, different. I was going to a different college. I really wanted to meet new friends and like do that whole experience. I had no idea what I really wanted to do with my life. Although I was in elementary education, I really didn't know how I was going to say that that's probably not what I was going to do long term. Like I had all these things that I was working on. I knew for a fact I did not want to win. Like that, that was what it basically came down to. So that night, After that rehearsal, I called my sister, Amy. Now, Amy is uh, just a little over a year older than me, and she's an engineer. So she was my go-to. She actually still is my go-to for solid, logical advice. She always knows what to say and how to say it. Even today, as adults, I go to her for random stuff. (laughs) So I'm 20 years old. She's like 22. And I explained to her how I just wanted to dance, and now it looks like I might accidentally win this thing, and I needed her advice to know how I was going to get out of it. So I posed the question to her, should I just quit now, like before the pageant even happens, or should I just do really badly the rest of the entire pageant to make sure that I don't win? (laughs) Can you believe that? I was officially caught on the ledge, and behind me was... All of the fog I was caught in, and in front of me was what I thought was my out, which was really just quitting and self-sabotage and just doing terribly and all this bad stuff, right? I was asking how I should quit. Now, maybe you've been here before in pageantry or in life. I know we've all been here in life before, too, where you're just having this internal battle between jumping into the pit so that you don't have to face the looming plans that you maybe didn't even plan for, Or do you turn around, walk into the room that's even full of fog with your head held high and truly face the music? Now, today I have wisdom of now knowing that God has plans for me and for you. In fact, in Jeremiah 29, 11, God declares, 
I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, to not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now, when I was on the phone with my sister at this age of 20, I was terrified. I did not want a future in pageantry. I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't know what I was doing. I It was actually my first time ever competing. They always said to me, everyone always said, that you have to do it a few times before you win and because that's how people learn how to do it right. And so I'm thinking, what if I accidentally win this time? The whole community is going to be like, they're going to know I'm a fraud. And I was a tomboy. I didn't even really like wearing high heels. And now I'm going to have to wear high heels every day if I win this thing. Everyone's going to be mad at me because like I'm really not the best person to win. I'm going to have to like pretend that I wanted to win the whole time or something, you know. So I just could not see a way out. This fog was totally clouding my mind. And I rattled this all off to my sister, Amy, with a horrible panic, knowing that she would be, like, empathizing. I wanted her to jump into the circus of fear that I'd been building and, like, play along. You know, like, I was like, oh, it's going to be this bad and this is going to happen and this horrible thing and this horrible thing. And I really thought that she'd be like, wow, that is so terrible. Yeah, you're right. And this awful thing and this. I thought she'd jump in there with me. But she didn't. That is true love. (laughs) That's true love, my friend, and that is what I'm here to do for you today. I still remember my sister's response. It had very little emotion. (laughs) It was overly matter-of-fact. She simply said to me, oh, Alicia, just have fun with it. If you win, you can always give the crown back. I mean, people do that all the time. Now, it turns out that people don't actually give crowns back all of the time, (laughs) but her advice completely stripped me of my fear completely. This huge, massive, grotesque, dark beast of fear that I created myself in my mind was shriveled up so small and insignificant now. And I was like, yeah, you know what? She's right. If it's terrible, I'll just give the crown back. (laughs) And in an instant, she talked me off the ledge. After all, the worst possible thing that could happen was that I'd actually win. And then I would just smile and say to the first runner-up, oh, here you go, sweetie. This this is actually for you. I don't want an after all. <laughs> now, there's some funny future story to go along with this whole thing I'm going to tell you in a minute. But first, I want to show you how to get off your ledge, how to flip around, face the fog in your way, and we're going to get you through that, sister. So I'm treating you today like my sister treated me years and years ago. I'm going to give you two easy, really easy steps to get rid of all of that emotion around the worst case scenario and to actually see the facts of your true situation. Now, two steps, right? Step number one. Now, this is to simply brainstorm all of the worst case scenarios. Okay, now this should be easy because this is the fog that's right in front of your face right now. You're stuck in it. It's big. It's hairy, scary. These are the what ifs that you've been building up in your head for days or weeks, maybe even years. What if this? What if this happens? What if this happens? I find that the best way to do this step is to start with this phrase, the worst thing that can happen is dot, dot, dot. Okay, now. You could do silly stuff with this. Like it would be a total waste of your time to make crazy things up. Okay. We don't want to do this like in a ridiculous way. Okay. So don't be like, oh, the worst thing that could happen is I will fall and break my left foot and my right shoe is going to fly off of my foot into the audience and everyone will see my underwear and then I'll fall off stage and my pinky finger is going to go into the judge's eyeball and they're going to go blind for years. Like, okay, you get my idea. We, we don't want to take it to a silly, ridiculous level because it's just going to waste your time. What I want you to do is dig up real, actual fears that could truly be keeping you from being your very best self. So for example, in my situation, it was the worst thing that can happen is a win. You might even think the worst thing that can happen is you'll lose or the worst thing that can happen is you'll trip on stage or you'll blank out during your interview. You might even say the worst thing that can happen is I won't win and I'll be made fun of for weeks. Okay, so you get the idea. I want you to write out your fears, real life fears, okay? Then, step two, this is the hope. God has a plan for your life, plan to give you hope and a future, okay? So here's your hope. For every single line item, the worst case scenarios you've created, I want you to create 
a actual realistic solution. Okay, how would you really truly handle this situation if it actually happened to you? So let's say you really do fall on stage. What would you do? You're not going to like lay there crying in a sobbing mess. No, like, yeah, you might think you want to do that, but you're not. You're going to stand up. You're going to smile, maybe laugh a little bit. You might just walk straight off stage or you might continue to do your walking pattern or something, okay? Let's say you blank out during your interview. Like complete, you just have no idea what you're saying. You're not going to stand there for three hours and just like have your mouth dropped and your eyes wide open and everyone's standing there until someone says like, hey, bring this girl a glass of water. Like no, that you're not going to do that. You're going to be embarrassed and you're going to say, wow, I'm sorry. I'm so nervous right now. You might even say, could you ask me something else? Okay, like that's really what you would do. So do you see what I mean here? We are preparing for the worst case scenario before it even happens. Okay, so go through all of your worst case scenarios and create a solution. Now, step three is vital to winning this whole thing. Steps one and two are going to get you through what you need to get through. But there's this extra third step that's going to be like really the cherry on top of it all, okay? Step three asks, am I willing to go for it anyway? This is like asking yourself if you're willing to risk the worst case scenario for the opportunity to have success, okay? So imagine when my sister told me that I could give the crown back in the worst case scenario that I actually won. It seemed at the time so reasonable. I was like, yeah, you're right. Oh my gosh, I don't have to take on this title. Like, let's say I do win. Who cares? I'll just tell her the next day. Like, ah, I just don't think this was right for me after all. Like, I'm unfortunately really not the one that's going to be able to do this. People might be mad at me for a while or whatever. You know, who cares? But at least I could just give it back, right? Now, of course, I am not suggesting that you compete for things that you truly do not want, okay? Please don't take that from this situation. I'm going to fill you in on the final parts of the story in a moment. But from my young perspective and what I was – visualizing right then that was the thing that cleared out the fear for me so for example for you the worst thing that can happen is that you might lose the pageant and then that really super cute boy will not ask you to the school dance and so instead you're gonna have to go with your girlfriends now that that could really happen like that might be a reason that you might feel like gosh worst case scenario is i'm gonna lose and this guy is not gonna be into me anymore and then i'm gonna look like a loser at the dance Probably that isn't a good enough reason to quit, although maybe for you it is. If the worst thing that can happen is that your final answer becomes a viral video, which for many women, by the way, it has, (laughs) then what you might have to do is turn it into a Hollywood hosting career. And in that case, you might just be willing to risk that, right? However, if the worst thing that can happen is that your sick grandmother is going to pass away while you're on stage and maybe you haven't seen her in 10 years and you know she's begging you to come visit her or something, you might decide that that is not worth the risk. And this would be a great reason to not do the pageant, okay? So this is something that is totally individual. It has to be fully and completely for you and you can't let what other people think about your decision sway you, Okay. Go back through, read your list completely, and be honest. Are you truly willing to risk the worst-case scenario, or is it wise to respectfully bow out of the pageant? Now, I want to finish because the irony of the story of my second pageant is that about three days after I talked to my sister and I decided, yeah, I'm just going to do it, and we'll see. Like, If I win, I'll just give it away. Well, actually, God completely shifted my perspective, and I decided I actually wanted to win. My mindset was flipped completely around, and now what's fascinating is like now 10 years, actually more than 10 years later, I believe that God truly had this in my path, and he did not want me to miss out on this. I am so grateful that I cleared out the fog and was able to continue to pursue the pageant. In fact, I really went all in. I won that pageant. I was given over $4,000 in scholarship monies. I placed in the top 10 at the state pageant. I impacted my entire community in a major way that year. I met some of the most amazing leaders and mentors that I've known in my life. I started a 10-year pageant career that led to a full-time coaching business. Now I am fully able to say that I was blessed then in order to be a blessing now to others. Girl, listen. God knows what he is doing. Do not let fear be the thing that holds you back from your win. 
Go make your list of worst case scenarios and discover how are you going to overcome them so that nothing can hold you back from what God has in store for you. Because that, my dear, is how you win a pageant. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are ready to take your pageant training to the next level, then I would love to work with you. You can get the whole scoop on how we can work together at winapageant.com and click on the tab that says work with me. I will see you on the next Win a Pageant Wednesday. Hey there, I'm Alicia Darby, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching that last video. If you totally loved it and got something from it, would you just click subscribe right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel? Hey, I am here for you, and I've got so many more trainings and videos for you. In fact, this one would be a really great one to watch next, or if that topic doesn't interest you, then try this one. It's my most recent video training, so I think both of these would be really great for you. Thank you again so much for subscribing. I am honored to be your coach. I'll see you again soon.